difficult topics like emotions. Even with young children, Shelley John runs the popular social media account Ivy's Library and it gives bite-sized book reviews for babies and toddlers and young children. So I asked Shelley how Ivy's Library actually got started and why she started documenting the book she was reading to her little one. It's kind of got set up as sort of a happy accident. I found that I was surprised at how boring maternity leave can be at points. Babies don't do very much. (laughs) And I discovered that actually sitting and reading with Ivy was something that I found really helpful for me. And it was a really nice bonding experience. And as a result, I bought quite a lot of books and um, friends and some people from our, my baby group. They were always very interested in the books that we had. And someone jokingly suggested setting up an Instagram account and referenced what was new in Ivy's library. And it, it kind of sparked an idea. So I did that and discovered that people were actually genuinely interested in the children's books that we were reading. It started off as just a few lines every evening, the the book that we read at bedtime, and it's now sort of evolved into a website, an Instagram page, a Facebook page, and I do daily reviews and also weekly interviews with parents about the books that they read with their children as well. It's amazing, isn't it, how these things just take off sometimes? I think with children's books in particular, people get very excited about children's books, but often don't have the time to go and browse them and find new ones for themselves so I think anything that makes that a little bit easier for parents works really well. How old is Ivy? She was three in November so I've been I've been documenting this since she was probably just before she, she turned two. Do you ever struggle to find books that have maybe happy positive messages Shelley is that something you look for in particular would you say? I do I mean we I, I review a, a whole range of books I tend to only post things that Ivy loves and um, so we do you know the usual storybooks, the Gruffalo, the kind of things that you'd expect. But I find books that talk about emotions particularly interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that posting books which talk about understanding emotions, managing emotions are definitely something that spikes an in interest within the people who follow us. You definitely see people want to hear more about those. And you can get some strong life lessons across in books nowadays, can't you? For you know, understanding feelings are often ta- tackled in books that are aimed at quite young young readers or, or people you know that are read to. And and potty training, I mean all the a potty training book was amazing for our little boy. My little boy's three and when I was potty training him, Pirate Pete's potty worked a treat. Yeah, we use Princess Polly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when we're doing it. definitely. And I think that you know we use these things for potty training, starting school, going for a haircut. You know, all those books exist. So why not you know read the same around mental health? You know, emotional intelligence. Yeah. And I know you posted earlier this week about Children's Mental Health Week and the fact that you like to read books to Ivy about emotional intelligence. How do you find Ivy reacts to those types of books? Really well. Uh, with all things, there are some really bad books out there with really big budgets, and there are really good books out there with really small budgets so I think you have to be quite selective in what you choose Um, but there are some really really good ones out there that have really sort of sparked your imagination one in particular called The Colour Monster by Anna Lanus which is really really accessible for a child of her age and she will quite often get it out she likes reading that book and she'll choose it not just you know, when I feel that we need to use it, she'll choose it as a bedtime story as well. And that's quite often telling, isn't it, as to which books they choose? Definitely. And I think if you get a book that goes too hard on trying to be worthy, if that makes any sense, yeah. then that doesn't always come across with small children. But the ones, like, there are lots of really playful ones that she chooses to, to read with beautiful illustrations. It's those kind of books that I really enjoy reading with her. Can get ones <laughs> with emotional intelligence, but sometimes it's nice to just have a silly. bit of a laugh, isn't it? A silly one, yeah. The silly ones are great. I mean, we posted about a book called Pooh Bum earlier on in the week <laughs> and that did spectacularly well. Everyone thought that was fantastic. <laughs> You mentioned The Colour Monster there, which is um, a book equating emotions to colours. Can you give us any other recommendations with regards, you know, especially if we're thinking about Children's Mental Health Week, any other books that you would recommend? There's another one which I really, really like and which Ivy really enjoys as well called Me and My Fear by Francesca Sanna. And that takes the idea of fear being a small creature that you carry around with you that can be your friend and that helps you stay safe, for example, but actually 
when you get into a situation that you find uncomfortable, the creature grows. The example in this particular book is a girl st- starting a new school. Mm. And as she starts the new school, the creature gets larger until eventually, you know, she can't talk to her parents. She can't play with her friends because the creature is taking up the whole room. And it uses that sort of analogy. And then you see how she, she tames the creature and he starts to, to get smaller. And she, re- she sees that everybody else has their own little fear creature we're so lucky, I think, as parents, aren't we, and grandparents as well, that we have this vast array now of these types of books. Definitely, but it's only, I think, the last couple of years that we've really seen they've really started to become popular. I was reading an article in the bookseller earlier this week which said that the projection is that mental health books, in particular for children, non-fiction books for children, are expected to go sort of stellar this year. They're really expecting those to be popular. Yeah. But I find that trying to find books in this area with Ivy is that Mainstream publishers, there's now quite a few out there, but actually it's the small independent publishers that I think are doing a better job of, one, talking about mental health, but also talking about things like diversity, disability, showing strong female characters, for example. Yes, Um, there is more more diversity now, would you say? Yeah, without a doubt, but it's definitely something that started within the sort of the little indie book publishers and is now spreading out to the larger publishers. Have you ever thought about putting pen to paper yourself, Shelley? (laughs) That's the big question. I would love to. <laughs> I mean, I've always been a massive bookworm and I've always kind of had it in my head that I would love to do this. But it's it, there are so many children's books out there. It's it's finding the right idea, I think. It would need to be something that is original. So yeah. maybe if, if that idea comes to me, who knows? And we shall keep an eye out. That's Shelley John talking to me about her social media account, Ivy's Library, it's what it's called. So if you're interested in it, then Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing. Ideas, brilliant ideas, book reviews as well about those kinds of books. And especially now, given that it's Children's Mental Health Books, uh, sorry, Children's Mental Health Week, there are some really good book suggestions for younger children that explain things like emotions, grumpiness, all sorts of things are covered there. Some great suggestions. So Big thanks to Shelley there, Ivy's Library. It is BBC Newcastle, Radio for the North East. Some George Ezra on the way. This is Candy Statton and Young Hearts Run Free. What a great song for the weekend.